Okay, so this is the rig as it ships without the drills. Got a 12 volt deep cycle battery on the side. You've got a master power switch. There's some things I haven't told you guys that you probably, yeah. I don't know. And uh, we have a charging port here where it comes with a smart charger. Um, you can plug it in at night and it's ready to go the next day. Although it'll last for a few days on a single charge, depending on the type of work you're doing. Um, the DC winch is controlled here. Has up and down control. And at the top of the column there is a cutout switch, safety switch, so you cannot raise it up uh, to hit the top plate. It will stop before it gets there. Uh, in uh, horizontal work, we leave the shifter here. has three positions. It has reverse ratchet, forward ratchet, and a neutral. When we're doing horizontal work, we leave it in neutral, which allows for, you know, feel the action on this handle. With that much weight out there, there's effortless, right? Yeah. So it's all it's 12 to 1 mechanical advantage. It rides on these high load bearings. These are custom made here. One in the front, one in the back. <coughs> they can be adjusted with set screws to increase or less or reduce the the uh, amount of pressure to accommodate different weight of uh, out, outboard weights. So if you if we take this off and put a single drill on, you may need to adjust these to get this feeling because this what you're looking for is uh, if we didn't have those bearings you'd have all sliding friction of steel on steel and it's really hard but <laughs> you know you feel it you're doing a lot of wo extra work but you can dial this in as it is right now and it's it's buttery um, right now it's locked in reverse so what we're going to do today is do a, uh, a Drill by, it's currently set for drill over drill, but this can be reconfigured. Today we'll do a drill by drill. I'll show you how quickly we can change the configuration. Um, this handle here is a pitch control lock. So if we want to change the pitch, I'm going to bring it up slightly. I can loosen this. It's only hand tightened. It should not be tool tightened. I can change the pitch and lock it again and now I'm fixed at that angle for whatever work and here not horizontal I would be using my ratchet lock um, we can drill directly overhead or we can drill straight down uh, it, it can drill in any position and two rear wheels are lockable if you're drilling down or if you're close to an edge these front legs can retract back to this position to reduce the footprint. So if you're doing overhead work close to a wall, you can get really close to a wall. Um, if you have to come up close to an edge, uh, you might want to have these retracted. <clears throat> Essentially, it's just reducing the footprint if you need it in a scissor lift or what have you. But when we're doing horizontal work, the uh, moment arm is such that we have to uh, have these out here to support that load. So that's why they're out right now. So right now we have two drills. They can be repositioned um, simply by loosening the handle sliding them into position and locking them down and these are all the handles on here are spring loaded so we can put these in neutral and put them in a position that we like so that they're not protruding out um, we can put any drill in here currently we've got two te40s in here but any drill can go in here any make and model the drills are actuated with this friction shifter. Once they're on, they stay on. And just like a regular throttle, pull it towards you, turn them on, away from you to turn it off. The triggers on different drills, this drill has a trigger that runs the length of the handle. Some of them have really discrete buttons. 
the, the run of this cable is highly adjustable. You can put this cable over any trigger and you have uh, a lot of um, play or adjustability right here to put the cable run across any trigger. So if the trigger is down here in the middle, which I have seen, um, you simply adjust this rod up and it'll change the location of the cable run. So it, it'll fit, it works with every trigger we've ever come across. Um, the collar locks in here. We have different sizes for different drills, um, but the one that's on here right now fits uh, the majority of drills on the market. Uh, but we do have other sizes and shrims to make sure it fits any drill. The drill can be stood off from the back because some drills have a rounded spine. So we might need to, this post here at the collar uh, will allow for an extra three quarter inches of step away from the back plate. And so you simply adjust these polymers and the length of this, and then the drill will stand out so you can accommodate a, a high curved spine of your drill, which some drills do have. All right, so I'm gonna change the configuration now and simply removing this pin. This might be kind of heavy. I would recommend you do this with it as a two-man operation, but I'll show you that it can be done with one person. Whoops, we have our drills on. Gonna lock my, my wheels. <coughs> Yeah, no, so I'll show it. Yeah, nope, we don't. I think I see what you're saying. So, um, yeah, I'm just doing it straight down. Yeah. I want so, to do two drills. Yep, no problem. I'll show you. Actually, I can show you right now. So, you can't do it uh, in this configuration. You have to do it like this, then that. I'll show you. We'll turn oh, this. Okay, yeah, so you're going to yep, turn that. We're going to turn way. this. Yeah, we're going to turn this sideways. I got you. See how easy or difficult this is going to be with one person. Gonna make this a little more. Oh yeah, that's just totally key. All right, so I'm gonna try this. Take this off, oh, of course. Lock that in reverse. And now there's a spring that's inside here right now, and it's just gonna stay there. Actually, can you grab the spring? It's gonna fall out right here where my thumb is. And just put it in that hole right there. Just like that? Yep, just like that. Thank you. And we have to move our shifter when we're in this configuration. So we don't have to, but I would put the shifter up here, simply changes the on off to that right. orientation. Right. But we don't have to, if, depending on what our hole spacing is gonna be. For now, I'm just gonna put these back out. And like you said, you have these, these offset screws right here. Yep. Uh, so when you are doing as far as getting this, the drill bit level, is that something you put the drill bit in, kind of put a level on the drill bit, and then just make your tweaks as necessary? Yeah, everyone's got a different way to do it. Shimmick had plates they were going into brackets, so they used a template. They got their bracket as a template, and they adjusted the drills so that they could just put their bracket onto the bits. Good enough. But every, yeah, but every bit has its own play in it, and if you're sideways, it's going to have mild sag in the, just in the bit. But when you turn it on, it's going to come true. If you're overhead, there's still a little wiggle. So there's a bunch of tolerances you have to tweak. Into account, yeah. But it's highly repeatable. Again, it's not a core rig. It, it's still very flexible. That goes there. I'm not going to move that. The pin goes back in. And you see that, yeah, that, it'd be safer to do that because it's fairly heavy, but it's safer to do that with uh, 
with two people, but pretty straightforward. 36 inches. I had so yeah, because then if you came down, you're dealing with those two arms right there. So they have to be. So we so we uh, when we're doing down drilling, these retract. These these things can pull back to this hole. Oh. Okay. So these are only out because we have a horizontal load and we need this extra support. Uh, so I'm going to show you what we would do. I have to make sure that this is in its rear locked position, otherwise this whole ram wants, <coughs> wants to fall out. These both have pins and they're locked, so nothing's going to fall out, presumably. And check this out. Roll through. And let's see if I've got any interference. I shouldn't. So we're vertical right now, and we would have these. Um, so is, is this 36 inches? Yeah, or it is. That so we turn. You just turn. So here's the thing: this people fail to see how configurable this is. This so it's actually a little bit further out. So it, it would give you a true 36, right? So typically, so what I would do, and this cable is stopping me from doing it right now, but without taking this apart, yeah, what I would do was turn this around. Turn from here, bring it off, turn it around, and slide it back on. Now the drill is turned around and is out here right. at true 36. Right, right. And the drills, um, in fact, I am going to show you uh, a couple other things. One, um, if the spacing is fairly close together, I take this off, I put it back like this, in this orientation, and I put both of these on one of the arms, on arm. so they're both out here. Got it. There's a, just so many ways to cook this, it's... Uh, well, what you said, it's, I mean, what people are buying this for is serial application, so you figure that part out once. That's it. Right. And then and, but then it's ready for the next job. It can just be tweaked into something else. Plus, when you're on a job with multiple units, I help them say, look, you're going to need one unit dedicated to your floor work. You're going to need one unit in a scissor lift and let him do all the upper work and then have the rest of your guys doing ground work because you've got that mid-range. Uh, and, and so you might have one job with three different setups, but those setups aren't changing. Because to reconfigure per hole of one guy, too slow. You find, your, you find your serial niche and you set it up and go. And if you've got a different one, come back and do that after or have another guy following you in his rig and have him do it. Yeah. This is really nice uh, in terms of being able to find it has no, a lot of pe winch applications have run on. The, the windings in the motor will, it'll go, it'll chase. You've seen that? You put your winch on and the power will wind down through the motor. And this will, it'll go, find it. And that can, we used to have that. And so I got this figured out to where now I can just, there's like, I can fine tune it. It's really precise. Like, I, so the thing here, like if this is parallel, it's all flat, right? Can't, yep, look, we've tried all kinds of magnetic torpedoes and whatever. First, first thing you have to remember is you're doing the work that a guy would be doing by hand. And that's the tolerance we work with. You, drill, you go in and drill those hands, drill those holes by hand. I'll drill the same, exactly the same hole with this. So we're not looking for zero degrees uh, held held true. There's at full extension. There's some flex in this. There might be a degree depending on how much weight we have out here. If we have a TE70 out by itself, probably negligible. But there's always going to be. There's always going. If we have pneumatic wheels on there, they compress as this arm as these go out. So you might get some dip. There's always so some. That's right. And this can be 
this can be adjusted to accommodate whatever you're seeing on the job. Now in this case I would probably pull these These are also sprung. But let's say we're just setting this up for this serial application. Everything has some hole drilled in it for you to reconfigure it. Because you don't, let's say you didn't have space or you want to have the drill supported this way. Well, for me, this is how I do horizontal drilling. I don't have them flying out like this. I typically have them either down like a regular drill or I have them inverted. But it'll go either way. What's important is that they both be the same. They both have to be the same because it, as we do that, we change the relative position of the bit. And that's right. The weighting on the structure. The we don't use can't mix and match drills because you'll have different bit lengths. Right. So they got to be twins. We just we always just have them in pairs. I got two of all all kinds of drills here. So I'm going to grab a couple of hollow bits. So I just have the customers set their depth to whatever their call out is and have them both the same. And if there's, and then, well, when we get started, the starting position would be putting the rig with the ram ex retracted, putting the rig up to where these things can touch the wall. So now you know you're in parallel. Even if there's a slight off, when you're drilling and one of these finishes first, you just keep drilling and, and this the one bit essentially will go dead as this thing keeps it from working any further while this one finds home. So your holes always get the same depth no matter what. There's enough flex in the system to let that one go. let any speed difference is you know uh, accounted for. I just noticed that one of my we put these collars here because that's where the slip point would be in these polymers because the load comes in like this and if it was going to move it would move it would force it to go like this mm -hmm. so as long as we lock the back one of the back polymers everything else yeah. will stay in place yeah. so that's what these retaining rings are for i just put these in this weekend that's why I... okay so that's that that's essentially set up. Now, there's always a concern of amperage, depending on the draw of your drills and the draw of your vacuum. You might not be on one circuit. I tested this last night. There will be an increased draw in current on these when we start to work them. If it trips, it'll trip right there. But I checked it, and it, it seems to run all three fine. But sometimes you'll have a breakout box on the job site, and yeah. throw anything you want in it, and it just keeps on keeping on. So now the typical control method for an operator, they're standing typically right here, but everyone that I've seen, and I've seen a lot of these now, uh, has their own way of moving these things around. When I'm transporting on the shop floor, I have an upper control handle and one hand here, or if it's in vertical, I'm, it, I'm grabbing this or grabbing it. Uh, but it's a two-handed operation, but it moves around pretty easily. I bring it into position. And essentially get it, these things, it's not critical again as I said that both of these be touching but this is a great place to start from. And you may have a, a run of these so when you're in relative position, um, I'm going to pull it back just slightly to make sure we clear the holes properly when we're finished drilling because we're going to drill those two holes and we want to traverse down to the next set. And the idea is that we've got a lot of these holes to do.
make sure these are all fixed. And let's drill a couple of holes. It's important with the hollow bit, and you guys know this, that we uh, have the vacuum cleaner on before drilling or you'll ruin your bit. The vac's on. And the drills are on. I forgot I loosened that to remove it. Okay. And we're going to have this thing in neutral. In horizontal, it's better just to leave it in neutral. Back wheels are locked. And drill a hole. And you can see that there's very little pushback from this. Those are finished. You go on to a new spot. These are old bits and I used them at World of Concrete for like two years, so this would normally cut quite a bit faster. What's talking about when you're coming out, it backs down a little bit, so it, when it pushes in, it kind of goes up and then pushes? Yeah. Because when you, when you yep. release, and right when it comes out of the hole, Yeah, I agree. It goes down about Yeah, I agree. That's uh, w the bit's walking up about an eighth of an inch as it's going in. So as we touch it, there's a little climb there. Ultimately, we want it to come out. See that? See, there's a little there's, there's a little climb, and I think that's the bit walk on the concrete. It's kind of the same on both, right? Like it's repeating itself on left and right. It's not like one feeling, but it's not. That's right. And the, what's key is that you, when when you have your mark, doesn't matter that there's a slight drop coming back out. As long as your hole is, as long as you have found your mark, and you may have to, like, you may have to just kiss it. Yes. Yeah. You may have to. Go ahead and drill one. Or two in this case.
fast as you can push, right? It's, yeah, it's gonna, yeah, it's really, yeah, and you can, the effort that it takes you to do the first morning holes is the same effort that's gonna, you're gonna have the same energy level, except for, you know, end of day, natural end of day, I wanna go home. You're not gonna be in the fatigue cycle. You're why, going. I have a question, why one of these versus, like what we do on the core rigs where we have a, a handle that you push and then you can pull back and then keep up here instead of having to go under? Um, you know, talking about like on a, on a I do, you know? but we have so we have multiple orientations for yeah, this, bar. And, and and this will let you be in any orientation, and you have you have 24 inches of throw on this, yeah. and um, I have like here. Let me show you another common posture that we see all the time. Once the hole is started, we get this, and there's no, you can just stand here, and there's no, there's no need to do this. Yeah, everybody's a little... myself in that area when you're down here. That's looking, right. Looking for a... Yeah, I, I hear you. So, with the round wheel, I can adopt a very neutral posture. I mean, it's effortless. I'm not doing, I'm not doing anything. See how these pins change? Based on the pressure, based on the pressure, we can have the operators can get a sense of how much pressure they're putting on. It's pretty important for overhead drilling where there's no slip, it's all compression. In a horizontal drill, it's not that important because you're gonna have the break free. Why don't we make a mark somewhere? I'll show you how we acquire a target. Put an X on there. Anyone got a pen? Nice. Nice. So here's how I would acquire the target. I, if we, wherever we started from, I would come down into that approximate range and just get up close to it. Castering wheels are always a bit of a challenge. And then I'd check it with, uh, so that looks pretty good. Lock the back wheels. Turn the, vac the vacuum on. Turn the drill on. Make sure we're in hammer drill mode, that's important. I'm, a big bit like this, I'm to get it started, I'm going to stabilize this, the unit. Let me, let me clean the hole. Do you want to clean it? Yeah, there's, we, we definitely would need to clean the hole. Yeah. Difficult. So 400 of these holes, I, I, would, I would tell a customer this is a great solution, whether it's overhead, sideways, or down. If you do this down drilling with this, this will drill by itself. I can raise it up. Once it's up, I can take this into forward or neutral, and just let, and it'll the weight of the system. This will drill its own hole. You could have that locked in while you start a second one. You have one guy running too. 
but normally I would say if you don't have at least a thousand holes and they're serial it's blocked blocked in some sort of serial pattern then you don't don't bother because if I had to go with this and do four here this is why this all this machinery installation rooftop installation didn't really work one there are a lot of other trades on the job at that point in time which can getting this around the site can be a pain in the ass and two I, I, I've got a big piece of machinery okay I can do you know, if the machines aren't there, I'm still going to have a funky layout. There's not going to be five of the same thing anywhere. It's going to be one of these, and there's a this and a that. And so you get this pattern where you're like, hey, you know what? This will make a nice, clean plumb hole for you if that matters. Otherwise, just have your boys, you know, knock it out by hand. It's going to be faster. So 